Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Germany once again. We're continuing on with this kind of mini series of German beers that I've been doing for you. So for this one we are going to go for my very first visit to Privat Brauerei Eying who are just from a little bit to the southeast of Munich and today we're going to taste their Jahrhundert beer which is a Helles style beer and this one was introduced in 1978 to celebrate the brewery's 100th anniversary and I've heard this is a really really nice Helles beer so I'm quite looking forward to trying this one. The Helles style beer you'll know it. when I did my big series of German reviews when I was staying in Heidelberg the Helles style of beer is one that I really began to love so very much looking forward to the tasting section of this video and I've heard this brewery are very very good as well so fingers crossed it's going to be a good review and I'm sure it will be. But anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery. It will only be two or three minutes long but if you want to get straight to the taste just fast forward the brewery websites in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I'll do from Eyinger in the near future and I do have the celebrator box as well so you will see that sooner than you think so please do check out the link and please also like my Facebook page and add me as a friend on untapped as well your support would be much appreciated there as well but anyway as I told you Privat Brauerei Eyinger from the small town of Eying to the southeast of Munich but the brewery was founded in the year 1876 by Johann Liebhardt who took over his parents' estate that they had bought in the year 1810. But he was assisted at the brewery by his wife Maria and they had, the pair had essentially been inspired to open a brewery because of the economic boom in Germany that followed the victory over France in the Franco-Prussian War and then the subsequent unification of Germany. This was a very prosperous time for this new country in Europe. But they began constructing their brewery in 1877 and they produced their first beer in February of 1878. They actually got the exact date for it from an extra to the diary of Johann Liebhardt um, but during this time they could only brew beer during Septem between September and April during the winter essentially and this was just due to the fact that at this point in history there wasn't artificial refrigeration like we obviously have now but the brewery continued to grow due to the development of things like the railways, telephones and electricity in the, at the beginning of the 20th century and Johann actually passed on the brewery to his eldest daughter's husband August Zehentmeyer but Johann sadly died in 1910 and then August actually had to fight in the First World War and during this period the brewery was run completely by his wife and young daughters and due to the rationing of malt they were only producing about 15% that the brewery could actually um, produce. They were only using 15% of the brewery's capacity during the First World War. But when August returned home from the war the brewery was in trouble due to the economic crisis in Germany and it also suffered from a fire as well but luckily they managed to rebuild with some financial aid and in the late 1920s um, the brewery actually regained growth by bottling their beer rather than simply producing kegs and the beer first began to reach Munich in the late 1920s after the brewery invested in some trucks. But in 1936 the brewery was passed on to the eldest daughter of August which was Maria and her husband Franz Kerisens Inselkammer and the brewery production actually lowered during the second war however Franz managed to grow the brewery very successfully in the post-war years and they were producing something like a hundred odd thousand hectolitres very very prominent brewery at that point in history. But the brewery bought the Platzl Hotel in Munich in 1953 and they invested heavily in infrastructure for the brewery in the late 1950s and early 1960s and in 1963 Maria and Franz passed on the brewery to their eldest son Franz Jr who had been trained in business and also as a master brewer at Weihenstefan and his brother Gusto ran the brewery tavern in Eying and Peter actually ran the Platzl Hotel as well so all three children were involved in the family business but under their stewardship the company continued to grow steadily and the brewery celebrated their 100th anniversary as I told you in 1978 and they actually helped establish a local history museum to mark the occasion but since then the brewery has completed drilling to find their own water source which is a very mineral rich water source which is quite common in South Germany actually although they opened a new brewery building in 1999 which is now one of the most technologically advanced breweries in Europe so anyway that's your kind of brief history of Privat Brara I and quite an interesting story and quite a classic Munich, uh, quite a classic Bavarian brewery for us to talk about but just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, you get the Lagerhell the Bayerische Pils, Jahrhundert beer which is this one here, the Altbayerische Dunkel, the Celebrator Doppelbock, Keller beer, Leiche Brau, Breu Weiss uh, Breu Weiss and Urweiss and also a Radler beer and in their seasonal range they have Winterbock, uh, Kirte beer, 
uh, Frühlings beer, which is the spring seasonal, and also Weizenbock as well. So some nice beers from this brewery, and they all seem to have very good ratings on Rate Beer and BeerAdvocate.com. So do be sure to check out Privat Brauerei Eying if you do get the chance. All the Eying Eyinger beers are very highly rated. So let's just get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork for this one. So as you can see, there's a little image of the town of Eying on there, and it looks very nice. You can see some of the, the, the crests on there. I'm not sure at the bottom if that's maybe the crests of all the three companies um, that the Eyinger company actually own. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it's just the town crests of Eying. So hopefully someone that watches this video locally can tell me a little bit more about that. You can see on the top label there, it just says uh, Jahrhundert beer, and this is the bottle cap on this one here. It tells you a little bit on the back, just the ingredients, water, hops, and malt, of this, it tells you on the front as well. Gebraut nach dem Bayerische Reinheitsgebot, brewed in accordance with the uh, with the Bavarian Reinheitsgebot, and it's the original received beer from Private Brauerei Eying. So yeah, looks a very very nice one. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. This one is a 5.5% German style Helles beer. I think it's a Munich Helles, but I'm not sure about that. But it's a Helles style beer anyway, and it comes in at 5.5%. So as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one, a bit of carbonation wanting to escape, as you can see. But let's just see how we get on with this guy. I've heard this one is a really nice Helles beer. And this is a style of beer that I actually really enjoyed when I was living over in Heidelberg. And hopefully this one is another very nice example of that style. I'll just let it settle down a little bit before we actually bring the rest of it out. There's still a wee bit left in the bottom of the bottle there but as you can see it's poured a really nice kind of pale goldeny straw colour which is exactly what you expect from the Munich Helles beer if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see the beer is transparent there's a nice two finger frothy white head on there that looks very very nice there's a few big bubbles sticking at the side of the glass but some quite a few smaller ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there but it looks very very nice beer typical German Munich Helles beer this one by the looks of it I'm saying Munich Helles, I should just say Helles beer because I don't know whether it's more of a Dortmund or Helles or a Munich Helles from the taste yet. But with Eying being very close to Munich, I'm willing to bet that it is a Munchner Helles beer. So yeah, looks very, very nice. You can see just a little bit of sediment kind of floating around in the bottle there. That on the glass now that I've put it. So it's not so much transparent anymore. There must have been just a little bit at the bottom of the bottle, but it looks very, very nice. So let's have a look at the aroma for this one. So yeah, there's a good mix of hoppy and malty characteristics in this one, which is exactly what you would expect from the Hellas beer. So you've got a nice kind of fresh grassy hop in there. There's perhaps a little bit of um, an aromatic aroma to this one, but it's quite, it's a typical German noble hop. I'd be willing to bet the hops are from the Hallertau region in Germany. But yeah, nice grassy, slightly floral hop this one. A little bit of kind of lemony citrus notes too, and you can pick up just a little bit of earthy character. But there's a big bready malt in this one, which is exactly what you expect of the Hellas style of beer. And there's a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness coming out too. So it has all of the elements that you would expect. A little bit of grainy character as well. But the Munich Hellas, the Munich Hellas beers are always quite simple in the aroma but usually they're very pleasant in flavour. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this one. Always give your beers a little smell just before you taste them, as I always say. So this is the Jahundet beer, the 100 year beer from Eyinger in Eying, which is just a bit to the south of Munich. Slange, prost. Yeah, very, very nice Hellas beer, this one. Very smooth, actually, is my first impression of it. More of a malt forward Hellas this one. My impression of the German styles of beer was that the Dortmunder Hellas tended to be a little bit more hoppy than the Munich one. I always found that the Munich Hellas beers tended to have a nice bigger malt presence, a nice big bready malt and this one definitely has that so more inclined to say that this is a Munich Hellas than a Dortmund Hellas which is probably quite obvious considering the how close eyeing is to Munich. But yeah, very, very nice tasting beer. Very, very sessionable. But 
yeah, it's very well balanced as well. You've got a nice big bready malt base on this one. They've got a nice, it, you get this kind of white bready, it's really spicy actually, it's a little bit kind of spicy, but you get this big white bready malt base that just blankets the middle of your palate there. On top of that, you've got a little bit of a kind of grainy, biscuity sweetness and some richer caramel in there too, but mainly a grainy kind of biscuity sweetness coming out of this one with that big, nice, um, smooth German white bread malt base in there. It's beautifully done actually. Yeah, the carbonation on this is really, really quite smooth. But to complement this, uh, this nice bready malt base that it has, you've got a good bit of hoppy dryness around this. It is typically kind of noble actually, but a little bit more floral and aromatic. It's it's really quite nicely done and it balances very well. So at the very back corners of your palate you're getting just a little bit of a kind of earthy character out of this one, typical of the German noble hops like I say. And around the edges of the tongue there you're getting a nice grassy character but I would actually be inclined to say that it's more a kind of florally aromatic hop that you're getting from this one. It does have a little bit more of a strong dry character out of it so it's it's really the hop character in this beer is really quite nice actually. Yeah, it smooths out as the flavour of the beer progresses it smooths out to be more of a grassy hop character but then you get a little bit of the more aromatic -y dryness, like I was saying. It's a very, very nicely done beer, this, I have to say. There's a little bit of a kind of lemony citrus flavour in this, too. Really quite beautifully done. Yeah. The whole flavour of this just blends together really well. The hop character in this beer really complements the very, the nice white bready malt base in this. A little bit of a uh, of earthy hop character at the back corners of your palate which just gives you a nice transition between the uh, the, the more aromatic -y hop dryness around the edges of the palate and this nice bready malt base. There's a bit of caramel and cereal character in the middle of the palate like I say but the flavours in this beer are beautiful and exactly what you would expect of, of the uh, the Munchner Hellas beer this one. It's it's just it's such a sessionable beer. This there's not much more you can say about it, and it has all the elements you expect of the style, as I say. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, this one, this one is definitely kind of light to mid-bodied. You've got a nice smooth carbonation in this one, but I would say that it is actually a little bit active as well. So you, this helps bring out the sort of um, aromatic -y and uh, citrusy flavours from the hops. You get a little oily bubble just right behind the very front of your tongue and that's where a bit of the kind of aromatic sharpness, dry character and a bit of the lemony citrus comes out as well. So just pay attention to your palate and you'll pick that up. But there's a nice bready malt base on this one that just blankets the middle of the tongue, very smooth and around the edges of the tongue it's quite a hoppy kind of aromatic -y dryness and in the aftertaste that dryness just lingers there but the beer the lingering flavours really are grassy and aromatic it's very very nicely done I have to say so do give this beer a try if you get the chance but anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review it's been really cool to review one from a German brewery who I've never tried anything from before and I will be going back to them soon with the Celebrator beer I've got that in my crate over there and I'll review that for you within the next week or so so stay tuned for that but I hope you've enjoyed this beer review as always let me know in the comments comment section below your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it before. Always interesting to read them. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and like my Facebook page, add me as a friend on Untapped, let me know what you think of this beer. I hope you've enjoyed the beer review and until my next one I'll say it's you for now. Prost to you guys in Germany.